Am I missing something? I'm confused. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on everybody and welcome back to some more gameplay videos. Now I've got a couple things I want to mention at the start of this video. First and foremost though, if you're not already, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. It does mean a lot to us. It's a great way to support the community and be a part of that community. Uh, and we really do have a great one behind us. So please do feel free to join that. It would be amazing. Uh, also, if you like the video, just leave us a like. That would be great. If you don't, that's fine too. Feel free to dislike it. Either way, it really does mean a lot to us to, to just have you guys watching. So so thank you guys so much. Uh I also know we talked about starting the challenge week this week thanks to the new stuff from Jumpstart Mod or uh Historic Horizon, excuse me. Um I'm kind of postponing that a week. I want to get back into the challenge week very, very heavily, but I also kind of want to maybe play with the formula a little bit. Uh, and part of that is in, in tandem with what we're doing today without giving maybe too much away. Uh, I wanted to jump into uh, Historic Brawl a little bit. So Historic Brawl is, in my view at least, a little bit like Commander Light. Uh, very similar format. Obviously, we have a commander. We also have a 100 card deck in total. Uh, and they obviously have to color constraint to your commander, which is really, really interesting because this does ex basically have the exact same formula for uh, commander, just a much, much smaller card pool. Uh, and so I thought, you know what, let's give this a shot. I've not ever been a big commander player. That's not something that I do a ton of, but obviously it's the most popular format and I'd love to be able to kind of ease my way into it as as they say a little bit. Uh, and Historic Ball seems like a great way to do that. So we're gonna test that out today with the first sliver. Figure this is our first time playing. We gotta go with the first sliver. It is a five color deck, of course, obviously a tribal deck as well. Sliver spells you have ca have cascade uh, is, is the ability here. And obviously the deck is just jam packed with slivers. Uh, now there are, there is some interesting tech in this. Uh, most importantly, if you do cascade and say I play a blur sliver, we then cascade into a sentinel sliver. We actually cascade again and we can go down to a one drop. So we can actually really chain these out, uh, which is pretty awesome. Now there's a lot of tech in this. I'm not going to go over every single thing in this list because I'd like to kind of just go and jump into the games. We'll see how long those actually take and how many we can get through but i would like to be able to just kind of showcase the deck for you guys and do the best i can to play it uh and pilot it um but there is some nice little tech we've got some hand destruction some removal of course a lot of uh kind of uh anthem effects for this list which is obviously important for us uh one big downside to running a five color deck is always mana so we do have that uh we've got a lot of fixing obviously but uh, we're going to do the best we can to try and make this happen. Oh, one other thing that we did want to mention, Pyre of Heroes is in here. Now, there's a lot, again, to mention, but Pyre of Heroes is very, very nice for this list because we can sacrifice and kind of move our way up the chain into some of these bigger slivers. Uh, so first slivers chosen is quite good. Bone Slice Scythe Sliver can very quickly end the game. Uh, and then, of course, we just have some other big heavy hitters as we go up. So without further ado, guys, we're going to run this through a few games. I don't know how many we're going to get through i'm going to try and stick more to a time limit versus a uh a number of games this time so we're going to shoot for like 20 to 30 minutes we'll see how it goes uh but all in all it's going to be really fun so i hope you guys will stick around let's jump into it all right guys here we are for game number one uh and this is an okay keep uh so what we can do is use explore as well as pillar of origins to kind of push our way through to scuttling sliver things like that hopefully we can get some more off of explore we do have thought seize here uh, unfortunately, can't really play it, but the World Tree is a really good first land for us uh, because it does provide us long term with a lot of fixing. Uh, one thing to mention, we do have changelings in the deck. If you don't know what changelings are, essentially they count for every creature type, so they're fairly safe in terms of uh, 
the way they interact with slivers. So that's actually really, really fun. Also, if you notice my voice is a bit tired, it's because I woke up very recently. <laughs> uh, and so I am a little bit tired, but that's okay. Um, let's do this because this is a guaranteed. Uh, so we'll go for sliver here. This is just a guaranteed way to make sure we're hitting three mana because we did not get a land and our opponent gives up. All right. We're gonna jump into we're gonna jump into another game. Obviously, uh, not a great start, but we'll see how this goes. <laughs> all right, here we are for game number two. Maybe all of our opponents will just kind of pull that trick, and and maybe we'll just win off of that. Um, interesting. So this is where again the mana is always going to be an issue. We do have striking sliver plus blur sliver. Uh, I'm gonna give it a shot. It's not a super techie hand. Like that's that's the best thing I can say about this. Uh, but we'll we'll see what we can do. Um, it's not a great keep. Truth, be, wow, whoa, voice crack. Truth be told, we should probably have passed on this one, but that's okay. Uh, this doesn't do a whole lot, but we will play it out, and we'll attack him for one. Uh, first strike is really nice because it just is a very aggressive way to start off. So whatever the opponent decides to do, we can at the very least maybe poke through some damage here. Uh, oh, very interesting. Yeah, very good card for sure. And no land once again. Uh, worth noting, uh, these lists, I, I'm at the beginning, at the very least, I'm going to be pulling a lot more lists than I am creating my own solely because this is obviously a first in the format for me. And I don't truthfully have a great idea of, you know, the way to, to play these. So I want to make sure that we're, we're playing to the best of our ability, but, uh, that we're kind of learning the format as well. So with that being said uh later on once we get a little bit more used to the format my hope is that we can then start to create our own list and maybe talk about them a little bit more in detail before jumping into the games uh but regardless i'm i'm very excited about this because i think it's gonna be good all right we won again this is a weird day this is a weird day guys uh all right well i guess we'll jump into a third game <laughs> All right, guys, so here we are for game three. Uh, very interesting um, the way this is panning out, but uh, do we want to keep this? Yeah, I mean, I think we do. We've got some playable stuff here. Uh, actually, very good playable stuff, actually, uh, between these three. Uh, with Vigilance, Flying, and Haste, and then whenever they attack, they each player or uh, each defending player loses a life. That's pretty good. Uh, we also have Faceless Agent, which later on can seek, uh, which is a really awesome new mechanic, I think. Um, I know some people were a bit worried about it, but I actually really like it. One thing to mention, Planeswalkers can be your commander uh, in Historic Brawl, uh, which is interesting. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's drop this Stomping Ground down while we don't need it to untapped. That way we can save ourselves a couple of damage at the very least. This having reach is actually worthwhile here. Uh, makes sense. All right, so the question becomes, do we want white or do we want black? Uh, I think we definitely go white. That leaves us more playable options here. Uh, no sense in attacking in. This does have um, uh, reach, so there's really no point. There's another red source. Man, now I wish we had put that on black. <laughs> uh, let's do this. And the opponent gives up again. Am I missing something? I'm confused. All right, let's jump into game four. All right, uh, here we are for game four. I'm slightly confused uh, by a lot of what's going on right now, but you know what? We've won three games and we only had to play like two turns of each game, so that's pretty good. Uh, this is, I think, definitely a keep. We've got Divest, so we can get in there, uh, turn one and hopefully get a card out of hand, and then Ornithopter of Paradise is really gonna help us out as well. Uh, kind of fix us a little bit. Uh, and just provide out a creature, of course, but Ornithopter of Paradise is good in almost any deck, uh, I feel like, in, in Historic. And those are the kinds of things that I want to be picking up on here, by the way, guys. Because um, something that, I, again, as I'm learning the format, I want to make sure that what I'm learning is kind of the big cards to be looking at and that kind of stuff as we go along. Uh, I mean, I think we just take the carry edit. Um, I want to be looking at the cards that are like auto includes, of course, for every deck and things that or most decks, I should say, and things that are just like, hey, this is very clearly just a very good card for multiple, you know, uh, either decks or archetypes, whatever. So this is going to be able to fix us a little bit here. Uh, and we might actually get a turn four first sliver. 
which would be really sick because again this giving every every sliver we cast cascade uh, is just absolutely backbreaking for the opponent uh, so we'll see if that actually pans out or not now guaranteed they also get the the prismatic bridge which is a bit scary uh, although we do have some very powerful stuff that we can do here so we will see uh okay let's do this we're gonna enter that tapped uh i actually think what we do is potentially throw this out uh yeah i think we just throw this out naming sliver uh and what this does is not only long term it uh it kind of makes things a little bit uh, on our side it kind of boosts us but it keeps uh the slivers in our hand for when we have the first sliver out and can just kind of start throwing those down and then get a lot of cascade triggers so we'll see um i'm optimistic i'm very optimistic of next turn so we can rootbound crag uh and assuming ornithopter of paradise sticks around that means the first sliver does come down uh if it does not stick around we still rootbound crag and we can just play one of these uh that does not set us up very well for turn five on the first sliver but we'll see how it goes um Regardless, this is the most, this is the furthest we've gotten into a game <laughs> out of what, four, five games? I don't know. We're, this is weird to me. Uh, this might be the only game we actually get to see the full, full gambit of, but we'll see. So this does itself have cascades. So we do get to uh, throw this out. Uh, doesn't have a target, of course. Um, and we'll just attack him for two here. There's no reason not to. And we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, this is very, very nice. I wish this the the first sliver could come down first because this being a changeling, it would have uh, cascaded as well. But obviously, it happens in reverse order. That's just the way cascade works, and so that doesn't happen. Ah, coffee. Gotta love coffee. It's getting a little cold though. I need one of those ember mugs. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Those things are killer. <laughs> Somebody send me an ember mug. <laughs> uh, one thing I was talking about doing uh, at some point was opening up a like PO box um, as an option for people to send stuff in and we could do like mail days and stuff like that. I don't know what the interest there is. I don't even know if that's like worth doing. Um, but I do think it'd be kind of fun if you guys wanted to do something like that. So if you happen to be watching uh, and and have some interest in doing something like that, uh, please let me know, because I, I, I would love to, to just try some fun stuff like that. <laughs> All right. Well, definitely this one. Um, <laughs> uh, that cat. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I did that. Mm, I did that in testing as well. That's really annoying. All right. Uh, let's throw this down. I hate that. Uh, that's very good for us. Um, the the accidental decline is very real. <laughs> uh, as unfortunate as that is, but it's okay. Uh, but this really does help us. We see that they've got uh, Putrefy in hand. They also have Day of Judgment, so we can actually just um, give Indestructible to something if they use one or both of those. Uh, they very easily could here. So we do this, give indestructible here. Obviously that's the one we want to keep around. And now if they do day of judgment, it is fine. <laughs> it's not fine, but it's like not the end of the world if that makes sense. Uh, Lancer sliver is still here, um, but they kind of have to day of judgment this turn because if they don't, uh, they're facing lethal for sure. Um, I can't believe I hit decline. That's such an easy thing I feel like to do uh, with Cascade, but that's just my fault. I uh, I definitely did not uh, look at that quite quite well. Um, first strike is actually quite helpful here, uh, but so is this, uh, and we can Cascade quite a lot with this. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's just this. They're tapped out, so this is a freebie turn. To be clear, uh, yes, <laughs> play it. Now this cascades, this is what I was talking about. Uh, this is kind of the fun piece of all this. Mana Wef Sliver. Mana Wef Sliver is very good as well. Um, oh, and we get first strike anyway. All right. <laughs> uh, this cascades into nothing. Um, sorry guys, my phone is going off. Um, that exiles our deck and then it just goes back. <laughs> All right, 
cool freebie stuff uh one thing we could consider adding in here is any freebie spells like zero cost spells i don't know how many of those there are but that is worth thinking about um all right so we do have do we have haste we do not all right so we can just attack in right that's probably just the best option yep let's just do it they obviously have to block the 10-8, <laughs> uh, which does gain them three life, but that does kill the Dream Trawler. And then, I mean, they just, I think they're just dead. Like, I don't i don't really think they can do very much. Yes. Okay. Guys, I think we have time for one more game. So let's go ahead and do that. We're only at like 17 minutes. Um, it's its crazy. Uh, anyway. All right. let right. Uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for our, what, fifth and final game? <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Um, but I uh, i don't know if I love this hand or not. Um, it's interesting. Uh, doesn't seem that great, to be honest. Uh, there's no ramp. I think we take the free mulligan. This is, like, kind of okay, but that's about it. Um, do we keep this? I think we do, uh, mostly because we have three lands and multiple colors. So yeah, I think we just keep this one. Not great, but it is something. Um, this is the Ral Storm Conduit deck, which is, I assume at the very least, a combo list. Um, Ral is very, very good. Uh, just in general, I love that card. But we'll see what the opponent wants to do. Arcane Signet, obviously a must have in almost any deck. Um, all right, let's do this. Um, and this actually raises the question, do we go for the Ornithopter? Uh, or do we just go for the Leeching Sliver? I think I'm going to go for the Ornithopter. It blocks this little raven, which isn't, let me be clear, not a big deal. But not only that, it does help ramp us as well, uh, which we certainly will need. So I, I think I'd rather have this. Uh, Ral is going to get in here and scry. To, each op to target opponent or planeswalker. Okay, worth knowing. Um, this is nice though, because we are setting up a turn five, or a turn four, excuse me. Uh, whatchamacallit? You know what I mean. Uh, let's get Hive Stirrings going. Uh, and I'm just going to pass here. The reason being, these obviously don't really cascade because it's not a, uh, a technically a sliver card. So let's go ahead and get these down. That way, when we do cascade, they're going to get the benefits of a lot of the cards that we theoretically will cascade into. Uh, and so I feel like that's probably just worth it. Oh, they're going to claim the Ornithopter. Uh, sure, resolve it. I mean, we can't do anything about it. That's very annoying because my assumption is they may be able to kill it. <clears throat> or they're just going to use it to, to spend some mana here, uh, all of which is bad for us. It's kind of weird that they would steal it, though, um, unless they're just using the mana. I don't know why else they would do that. Um, this must be a big turn for them. I, I have to assume because I don't know what else they could be doing. Expressive Iteration, very good card. Uh, for, for two mana, this is like super, super good. You get to look at three cards, very solid. Um, very curious to see what they actually end up doing here. They've got two mana left. Are they gonna kill the Ornithopter? All right, they're gonna scry. When you cast, uh, you may copy and choose new targets for the copy. So that minus two is a little scary at some point. All right, um, that was weird. That didn't really do that much. That's why I say that. But let's do this. Maybe they have a counter spell. Maybe they don't. Let's make sure we play this. <laughs> That's actually interesting. Uh, all attack. I'm going to attack Ral. If they want to block Ral or with the Raven, that's fine. OK. Uh, this is nice because it just makes them spend a lot more mana if they want to target any of our stuff. Diffusion Sliver seems very sick. Uh, yeah, I like that. All right, so next turn, what do we want to do? Uh, we've got a lot of options, to be honest. Uh, Leeching Sliver would be quite good. Um, let's do this. We're obviously going to name Sliver. I think we want to go for the high mana value first. Uh, is that correct, though? Let's do this, let's do this, and let's do this, and let's play this. Uh, this leaves open some possibilities for us, that's why I say that. All right, cool. 
Uh, that's super good. And yes, absolutely, I will take that. Um, now, Rally the Ranks doesn't seem like a bad option because that does power up all of our stuff so it doesn't die to Baral, uh, which is, I think, useful. Although, I guess it, it doesn't have flying. Uh, so that's, that's interesting to note. Um, so in that case, maybe it's just Leeching Sliver. Cascade, we'll see what we hit. Divest, sure, get a peek at their hands, that's not bad. Um, see if they have anything that we can hit. This is very much a, oh, they just counter divest, okay. I mean, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Divest was a freebie spell, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe should have attacked first, I guess, but it doesn't matter. All right, so we need to take out Ral. That's gonna take out Ral. Uh, we attack. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, that seems pretty good. That was a very solid turn. We got rid of Ral. We dealt a substantial chunk of damage to them, uh, and they only have Baral out with three cards in hands. Um, and we know they've got counter magic, so counter magic doesn't seem great against us. Okay. They're going to exile this. They do have to then pay an extra two, uh, which is going to, I mean, uh, do we want this in the command zone? Uh, yeah. We do have the unearth, but we can still just replay it and we win. Guys, we did it. All right. This was a weird set of games, so we're going to talk about this really quick. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, we did nothing but win for like five games, three of which I believe we played five. I, I honestly, I don't remember. I think it was five. Two of them we actually got to play. Um, overall, I really like that though. Uh, so I'm, I, again, I'm not a big commander player. I have played a couple of times, but I've never really delved into Brawl or anything like that. Uh, and so I thought I would give this a shot just more on a whim and maybe try and push out a little bit of a different line of content than the normal standard historic kind of gameplay that we normally, we normally, uh, put out there, but I'm glad I tried it. Uh, I'm really into this. I think we're going to do more of this this week. Um, mostly through like at least probably once a day we'll have a, uh, a a historic brawl deck for you guys as i'm learning the format again i'm going to be picking up on these kind of like okay you always need this card kind of deal um and and i think that that's going to be an important lesson that being said if you guys have suggestions for me as i learn this format please 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 leave them in the comment section below it would be very very helpful uh because i do want to make this kind of a normal thing for it resolves is to jump into historic brawl I feel like it's a little bit more of an uh, an exciting format now that it's opened up the way it has. Uh, and so I just want to give it a shot. But regardless, guys, thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you'll subscribe and like the video if you did enjoy it. It means a lot to have you here. Hope you all have a fantastic Monday, and I will see you very soon for some more gameplay videos. Thanks, guys.